working on Ethereum far too long. Uh, I've aged significantly and um, it has been a wild journey. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been using Solidity, I think since it started uh, or since the very, very early, early, earliest versions. Um, so it's been a very wild roller coaster of uh, an experience. And um, and so uh, in lots of different apps, lots of different stuff happened, but, uh, but effectively after a little while, uh, you know, getting deeper and deeper into solidity and getting deeper and deeper into how the EVM actually works. Um, you know, you want to go, you want to go a little deeper and a little further. And, uh, thanks to, you know, Chris and, uh, and Alex, uh, you know, Yule has been uh, an interesting pathway. So yeah, today I'm going to present, um, you know, my extension to Yule, uh, Yule plus, um, you could call it a new language, but it's effectively, is mostly Yule, but uh, with some extras. That's the way you can think about it. Um, so for the agenda, we're just going to do a little overview of Yule. You know what what I really like as as a dev about Yule, um, and uh, and what it is, and uh, as well the motivations for why there might why there's justification for maybe an extension to Yule. Uh, you know objectives for this new language, um, a feature overview roadmap um, and uh, you know where we might want to take uh, Yule, uh, Yule Plus and uh, and then lastly uh, I have a special reveal of a project so you guys are going to see uh, well kind of the reason why I want all these things and the reason the sort of uh, the result of, of, of doing it so, um, so yeah that's sort of sort of the agenda. Uh, so yeah with Yule, um, you know, Yule is just a um, an intermediate uh, language. It helps Chris and, and Alex uh, and the rest of the Solidity team sort of build Solidity uh, and uh, and act as a nice sort of um, intermediate layer between assembly and some kind of reasonable language. Uh, and the things the things that really stand out to me about Yule is just simplistic grammar. Um, there really isn't a large grammar there. It's functional notation. Uh, it's low level. It uh, manages all the stack work for you. Uh, and if you've ever tried, I don't know, computer science class or something managing stack, it's it's a goddamn nightmare. Uh, so it's great. Uh, it's easier to audit and formally verify. Um, it, primarily at the assembly level. So so when I want to um, take a build that I've done and have people who do you know form verification work with it, um, I find the produced assembly is much easier to you know, build uh, proofs out of than um, than Solidity. So I think this is a big this is a big benefit. And I know there's tools that are on the way and that are you know constructed for for Solidity and and um, form verification. But uh, with Yule, we uh, we can really do it right at the assembly level, and, and just the produce build is is really clean. So um, the compiler is simplistic. Uh, I love that I can open up the Solidity compiler and look at the Yule section and actually understand exactly how it's breaking everything down um, and how it's going to uh, how it's going to ship off to to EVM code. I think that that's a huge benefit for the community and the language to be able to have this this really simple step. Um, Solidity's obviously got a ton of features and it's working with a lot of different concepts. Um, and this, this of course makes the compiler complexity, it increases the compiler complexity significantly. Whereas with, with Yule, you know, you're really doing more simplistic operations. So this is, this is minus the, the Yule optimizer, which adds a bit more complexity, but of course you can just turn that off. Um, and then, uh, it produces really efficient builds. So, you know, the, the, because it's just managing stack and you're effectively still using stuff right off assembly, you get these really tiny, clean builds of contracts. And I, and I really do like that. Of course, you're not going to get the safety you want, um, the, the language and compiler level safety um, that you get from languages like Solidity, but you do get a, 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 significantly increased uh, build efficiency. Um, so the deployment cost is very small. Uh, shared memory and uh, function macros. So 
you can actually uh, using Yule and I'll show cases of that. But um, one one big aspect is just sharing the same memory um, uh, across many different functions. And I know Solidity can probably and eventually do this um, using some some macro terminology, or if it if it already does, I I, uh, I don't know. I haven't worked with Solidity recently, but um, but effectively, this is one of the big um, reasons, and you'll see why in a, in a second. And as well, just more precise stack control and management. So just being able to um, more in a fine grain way build applications um, and low level code and get a better idea as you build, you know how the stack is actually going to be managed because you know the Yule compiler is actually very dumb. It's not doing anything special. So, so if you're if you're loading up a huge functional statement, then you know you're going to be pushing the stack even further, and that's basically, um, you know, the, the the precision you get with Yule. So, some motivations for the extension to Yule. So, so I love Yule uh, vanilla. I the second I saw it, the second I started to work with it, I immediately loved it. Um, and given that I've spent a long time with Solidity, I felt like uh, as a developer, it was sort of reasonable for me to to be able to extend my capacity and go further down closer to the the EVM metal um, you know, for experiments and for for development and everything else. And um, and I loved Yule for for various purposes. And I I built um, the Fuel optimistic rollup, which is um, what I'm currently building. Uh, most of the contract, about 80% of it, is written in Yule. So it's one function written in Yule, and then there's, there's a few Solidity functions. And in our second build, which we'll be releasing this quarter, uh, the, the entire contract's built with Yule Plus, effectively Yule, but Yule Plus. Um, so the lessons I've learned from that, I've kind of taken into this and said, okay, well, there's definitely a few things I would love uh, you know, in Yule, but it may not make sense to have in Yule. So first thing is um, is management. So um, building large code bases with Yule um, becomes very verbose and repetitive, obviously, because it's low level and it's going to not do a lot for you. Um, so it comes with a lot of uh, mental management, as working with you know memory on a low level w would always come with. Um, there's not a lot of sugar, so uh, uh, there's many instances where you just wish there was a little bit of syntactic sugar. Um, and uh, and adding it would not be significantly less efficient. So it's not like we're adding on these really complex um, statements that you know have big concepts around them or anything like that. They'd be simplistic concepts, and they just add significant notational value without you know um, increasing build complexity. Um, as well, uh, I I think you know you you can add sugar to something like Yule because it has such a simplistic sort of base grammar, um, but that doesn't mean that it should be in Yule because um, the reason why I think I love it and why other people will love Yule for certain cases is going to be because of its simplistic grammar and, and that there isn't all these new concepts or expressions or anything on top of it, it's very simplistic. So this becomes kind of a motivation to say, hey, maybe there should be a little sugar or extension on top of this that's going to pepper in little things that just make building apps with this easier. Um, and I will say too that I, I don't think it was the expressed motivation that Yule would be used for application development or for things like scaling and, and rollups, um, but it really fits the bill in terms of what I'm looking for as a more lower level developer with, with Ethereum um, and uh, for the express reasons above. Um, so, um, so of course, the design intention was not to, to put something really developer facing in front of everyone with Yule. It was more, you know, how can this be a nice intermediate step between assembly and the development of Solidity and or other languages. Um, so that's that's just to, to note that. So as for safety, Yule comes with little safety nets. Of course, it's just um, it's effectively a simplistic compiler over uh, over the assembly, uh, over assembly. So uh, and then lastly, extensibility. So making um, you know an open source layer on top of Yule 
that allows for a lot of custom language variants and plugins. Um, so this you'll see is kind of something we're we're looking we're looking at, and um, and it's something that I will we're already kind of using with um, uh, with D type, which is um, you know a, an interesting new typing system. So. Uh, these are the sort of motivations, and as well for for Fuel Labs and you know the optimistic roll-up uh, game, it's um, it's primarily about gas sensitivity, and you'll you'll see why in a in a second. And then as well, it's it's better for for roll-up contracts because roll-up contracts require a significant amount of of um, you know low-level gas sensitive uh, work in terms of you know um, breaking down proofs. Uh, a lot of cases where memory would be shared and where if you're copying fresh memory every time that's going to really significantly add up um so so you want to be able to have a deeper level of control over what's happening in execution uh, and then is, is lastly i'll show it's fantastic for building stateless contracts which are sort of I don't think a concept that people are really working with yet because we're not really dealing with with problems of scale just yet. Um, but as you'll see, stateless contracts are what we believe is the future of decentralized app development and uh, you know the future of well, everything. So um, so you know pretty pretty important. Um, okay, so. Uh, objectives for the new language, uh, and we'll, we're almost through my dense point slides, so just hang in there if you're if you're uh, <laughs> if you're getting bored. Uh, so objectives for the new language. So philosophy: don't do too much. Uh, value: just add sugar um, where you need it. Don't um, you know wh where it's only going to add maximal value. Don't don't add all this fun sugar uh, for nothing. Uh, Yule first, so produce valid Yule builds. Grammar, keep the grammar as close to Yule as possible uh, so that we're not doing too much, once again. Uh, be extensible, so allow others to add in different layers on top. Uh, you know, I'm not going to know every every reason or feature that people want, but I do know that JavaScript uh, is a really easy system to, to add and remove things, So, um, or it's a really easy uh, language for others to contribute and socially contribute. So um, you know, it comes with a lot of interesting potential experimentation. Uh, and then as well, uh, influence. So if a lot of developers are using a certain feature in Yule Plus, we could see maybe can that be carried over into Yule or Solidity in some format. So uh, just being able to influence other other languages. So the features of Yule Plus uh, after that huge uh, rant uh, are as follows. So just all existing Yule features, um, enums, constants, um, and Ethereum ABI generation. Uh, the, the hash generation, safe math, so you can basically get safe math uh, injected for free, um, and, uh, and you can turn that off as well. A any of these things you'll be able to turn off in the production compiler. Um, injected methods, so mslice and require, uh, and memory structures, which are the more sophisticated uh, addition and will be expanded to support uh, ABI encoding and um, a few other different kinds of structures, D-type structures, et cetera. So as I said before, Yule Plus is just a layer on the, the Yule you know, sole compiler. Um, so we've written um, Yule Plus and Nearly, which is, um, there's an E actually there, uh, which is a nice sort of grammar parser. Uh, so the, the grammar is constructed uh, in this uh, grammar language, which is sort of a hybrid between JavaScript and their own language. Um, and then uh, we break down the Yule code that way, add a layer of features on top, that gets compiled to Yule, and that's it. And we're really not doing anything more than that. So to cover some of the features, so here's what enums look like. Uh, we've we kind of kept most of the notation similar uh, to, to Yule. Uh, so you know, just enum colors, et cetera. Uh, so that'd be 0, 1, 2. Um, and as well, constants. So just adding the const uh, specifier. So this does two things. Uh, one, in, with constants, it uh, it will, if it's a literal, uh, i.e. a number, hex, value, something like that, it will just do injection across the build. Uh, if it's not a literal, so it needs to be run in, in execution, then that is going to be um, set as a let statement, but we'll look out for uh, other things trying to reassign 
and uh, and so that's that's the current way we're handling it. I'm sure there's there's more that can be done there, but that's effectively the the basic idea. Um, ABI signature generation and topic generation. So still all vanilla Yule, um, but you can do fun things like write SIG and then a uh, uh, effectively a solidity function, uh, which is how it's getting parsed. Uh, this is thanks to Ethers JS's um, uh, solidity function to ABI uh, parser. So you can effectively write uh, what you know you believe that function is uh, in in vanilla solidity. Uh, it's sort of a header, and then that's going to get compiled down to um, its uh, its signature and do all the checking, etc. Uh, same thing for topics uh, and the topic hashes. So it'll do the topic hash generation as well. Uh, so this just makes handling, readability, uh, all that sort of stuff. It just cleans up a lot of a lot of jargon that you're going to get if you just tried to do it with hashes, because you'd really have to pre-specify like this hash is this thing. So these are nice little generations, and that's just going to do a, a literal injection there, uh, which is quite nice. Um, so save math by default. So if you're just using add, sub, divide, etc., cetera, uh, it's going to um, uh, basically change that method name in execution and inject the save math methods above. Uh, so it'll switch add over to save add, and then um, you know then you're running that. However, you can turn it off, and you can use features like unsafe add. Um, so you're just specifying in the in the literal sense, hey, this is I, I'm I want unsafe here, uh, so give me unsafe. Uh, and of course, you can just turn it off outright if you if you don't want it. So really flexible on on the basic things like safe math and overflow and underflow checking. Um, and uh, you know, I, I with this addition, I want it to be as hands off as possible. I don't want to be maintaining this magnificent addition to Yule. I, I just prefer that it it gives us the flexibility to add what we need, um, create low level builds, and then move on with our lives. Um, so some methods getting injected and uh, another feature. So um, m slice and require. So all m slices is, is just um, is effectively just shifting shifting right um, by a certain amount of uh, bits. Uh, so you know here I'm just taking the first uh, four byte signature, uh, just grabbing it from the the call data that's copied to memory. Uh, so doing little things like that m slice is great for. Um, it, it's just. I use it so much in my builds that it just had to go into injection. However, these methods can be changed um, in the compiler settings, the injection settings, and um, you can turn them off. And you'll be able to um, basically uh, specify like, uh, OK, um, or, or, or you'll be able to go, hey, uh, I don't use mslice at all, so it'll never get injected. Um, so you have many different options with what's being added onto the Yule um, language here, and require as well. So you'll be able to specify like, hey, uh, you know, this statement, whether it's uh, true or or not, and then you can specify uh, an error message. And uh, we've chosen a simple error system here where the error basically um, you could put a little huge string in there. It's just going to hash that string. Uh, take the first four bytes and then use the first four bytes in an injected literal um, in the require statement. So that's that's all it's doing. And then it, at uh, compile, it will give you um, it will give you all the errors and their hashes, and it'll give you all the the signatures and their hashes. So you still get all the sort of luxuries that you would get from you know a solidity like compiler environment using sig and error and the, these sort of injected systems. Um, but they just come in little clean packets out, out uh, at compile time. Of course, we can standardize notation there and make sure that um, you know all the builds are up to, to spec and they uh, produce nice uh, nice arrays and everything else of all the ABIs. But but even right now, just with this basic injection, we've been able to to do quite a bit. Um, and then uh, lastly, the most sophisticated thing we've done, and this is going to change over time. Um, right now. You will, in the later versions of Solidity compiler, support uh, types. And uh, they're basic types, but they're still types. Um, so uh, right now, Yule is just uh, all, it's typed, but it's all, uh, at least in the builds that we're producing, it's um, it's all the same type. So it's once only one type. Um, but of course, uh, as we go along, um, we're going to add in that typing. And we're going to add in, as well, some custom typing uh, with the enums, uh, mstructs, and um, You'll be able to do some basic custom typing, um, so I think that'll be a really 
nice addition. It's really not that hard. It's just uh, haven't gotten the time yet to, to switch it. So right now, this mstruct notation um, is sort of in a non-type setting, but it will be in a type setting um, uh, after. So, so basically, what we're doing here is we're just specifying and describing an existing structure in memory or a structure that may come into existence in memory. So um, right here, we have some complex data. Maybe that complex data has a signature, it's four bytes. Maybe it's got a value that's 32 bytes. And maybe it's got um, an array-like structure um, with a dynamic length uh, and, uh, and an array where you have 10 bytes uh, for each item. So this, this allows you to describe um, a lot of what structures would be popping up in ABI. Uh, however, this doesn't have offsets yet, um, where you can specify dynamic offsets for each property, uh, but that will come as well. So you'll be able to get a nice sort of recursive um, offsetted uh, memory structure description. Uh, and I think that that's going to add a significant amount of value to Yule Plus. So, um, so right now it's, it's more just keep it basic and just see how this can be used. And this is what we're going to build a lot of our roll up with. Um, but in the future, you're going to have full-fledged ABI. And not only that, you'll be able to specify your own ABI encodings, uh, and uh, you'll be able to specify your own typing uh, as well. So um, uh, these would turn into, you know, instead of um, 4 and 32 and 32 and 10, it would go to something like, um, you know, like a bytes 4, or uh, it would go to like a U, uh, U32 um, and U256, et cetera. So that's really um, you know where the typing is going to come in, and then here we have the usage. So the usage is really cool. It's just uh, the structure name, so complex data dot. So the dot notation is already supported in Yule, so we're not doing too much here from a sugar perspective. And then signature. Uh, so there, and then we're just putting in the start of where complex data as a structure begins. So this makes managing memory at a low level just really, really, really easy. You you. You're just laying out the structure and saying, hey, here's the structure, and then you're just picking it apart. And um, and it comes with all these sort of uh, generated functions. So you can say, give me the position of this particular value. You could say, uh, give me, um, oh, sorry, array should be R there. Uh, you can say, hey, give me this item within this array at this position. You can say, give me the array length. You could say, um, hash this particular value or hash the entire complex structure. And it'll just do, all the positioning for you and it'll inject those functions so it's really just a, a function generator and uh what we want is a system where you can tune that generator the way you you want it um because uh we can't expect everyone to um you know use all of the same formatting however abi encoding at present does most of what we need um unfortunately when you get into rollups the abi encoding falls short because it's not type packed. Uh, so this is something we can go over in the in the discussion, um, but that's effectively uh, what's up there. So roadmap uh, and future language exploration. And and by the way, what how am I doing for time? Um, am I am I ranting too much? Uh, no, you're good. You have five minutes to go, and then okay. we will anyways go into the you will discussion. So great, it's easy. great. Okay, so I'll get through this as quick as I can. So. So basically, we're going to add um, this ABI uh, in string uh, specifier. So this will actually generate an M struct based upon the ABI you specify, and then you'll be able to, you know, uh, then use those structures in existing um, memory, which is really cool. So this is great for call data and parsing call data and doing all that sort of work. Uh, as well, you'll be able to, it's extensible, so you'll be able to plug in your own typing system like dtype. Uh, the objects will be extensible, so we'll introduce some basic extensibility. Uh, it'll just be copy and paste extensibility, um, so it'll just follow the expressed ordering um, and uh, and just inject it. Um, there'll be tiny packages, so we'll do a, a tiny little package manager, um, and uh, it might support as well the uh, the EPM package manager um, because I know it, uh, it it can handle this sort of thing. Uh, better CLI support um, and uh, low-level uh, customized version of Remix. So Remix is great, and and I and I like the way it's configured. Um, but I think um, yet we could have yet another lower-level oriented version that I think expresses what's changing in execution over time uh, with better GAS um, 
uh, metering and so forth. So, uh, and then the big thing as well, types, uh, uh, types, basic custom types and memory pointer types, uh, which is what we're gonna discuss next. So that's the roadmap. So now for a special reveal of some stuff that we're working on here at Fuel Labs and uh, we think will be a game changer and I'll try to present it in four minutes. Uh, so here we go. So uh, using our Yule Plus tech and our low level code, we were able to roll up uh, ENS. So we now have a version of an ENS registrar and Nick Johnson knows all about this uh, and uh, we'll be releasing this soon. And basically it cuts, cuts the cost of ENS registration currently in half, um, but that will be even more as we get it more efficient. And as uh, uh, we kind of go further, it's a system that is uh, got a lot of features. And um, and this this is sort of uh, uh, the, the usage of why Yule and Yule Plus and these lower level languages is so important. Um, because as Ethereum scales, as we go to 2.0, as we go to uh, a world where we're in a more stateless environment, we're using a lot less state rights, all of this becomes very, very critical. You won't be able to use state the same way, so you're gonna have to get creative. So, um, so Sparse ENS, so what is it? Uh, it's stateless, verifiable, and cheap ENS registrations. So basically we've knocked the cost of uh, registering a name down at good gas prices to about uh, 0.001 uh, cents per name. So 10, 10K gas. Um, and uh, right now we're sitting at about 45K K gas per game uh, per name. So this is, you know, pretty significant savings. Um, and uh, name registrations can be batched. Like I, I personally love like getting face to face time, if you can call this that. But um, yeah, I don't think it's like the end of the world if Oh, sorry, is someone talking? Uh, sorry, uh, whoever is talking. Um, I, would, I would say mute, mute you is guys. this the usual time right now? Yes, it's, this is the usual. Okay, Nick, I muted everybody, and now you have to unmute yourself again. Here we go. Great. And then it should work. Great. Uh, okay, can you guys see me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Still got it? Okay, great. So, um, so the way that this works is using a sparse Merkle tree uh, and um, some kind of encoding. Uh, this is, uh, well, you can get 16 characters in with compression, but you lose certain names if you do that. Um, it's EIP 712 compliant and it's state optimized. So the entire thing, uh, the entire contract, it uses one state mod. So you're literally registering potentially millions of uh, combinations of names and we're only doing one state write on Ethereum. So we believe that this kind of design is the way that Ethereum apps and EVM apps should work. Uh, we shouldn't be using uh, millions of state rights on Ethereum. It's, it's not sustainable. And the way that the client manages state, as we've seen, is, is a huge bottleneck because uh, of random access state uh, uh, memory. So this sort of state optimized design where you can have millions of ENS names being registered under a single state mod uh, is sort of the way we think it should go. So here you can see we have our one store that we use for the root, and then you're deriving uh, the names, and a name is broken down by an encoding scheme to a specific uh, to a specific number, which is going to be your uh, number of where this is included in the sparse Merkle tree, uh, and then that's going to resolve to your name data. So this simple use of a sparse Merkle tree to increase the efficiency of things like ENS uh, will present you know, massive value add, I think, as we move closer to scale and just making things a lot cheaper. I mean, instead of paying um, something like one cent per name or, or things like that on a bad gas day, you're paying a lot less for that. And you know, for people like wallet developers and stuff, this is a pretty big deal. Um, so uh, you know, I can go into this a little further, but Effectively, uh, looking at some of the sparse ENS contracts, all this will be open source soon um, under Apache 2, and you'll just be able to, to really check it out. Um, but here I'm using the enums. You can see I'm using mslice. You can see I'm using uh, the sig generator. And you can see I'm using that mstruct uh, formation uh, specifier. So I'm really, all these things that we're building into language, we're really using all the time. Um, here's more mstruct usage. Uh, you know, taking in the registration and, and uh, doing the batch work. Um, and as well, uh, adding in safe math where necessary, adding in um, 
these nice little multi M store uh, bits of sugar, um, and then doing the require statements and so forth. So instead of doing M store zero, M store zero plus thirty two, M store zero whatever, you know you know how M store is going to function, so you can just do some nice quick sugar there, and uh, it just makes the notation so much easier. We we know what it's going to do. Um, so considerations. So I'll just try to wrap this up. Uh, so basically, uh, as we move into what we believe is a new era of contract development, which is stateless contract development, or using one to two state rights for an entire system. So imagine you imagine a DEX using only one to two state rights, something like that. Um, you know, we basically, uh, you know, we believe that scalability uh, is going to be key. Uh, designing for scalability is going to be key. Reducing S stores, uh, reducing S loads. Um, and uh, and getting to a point where the execution is very clean, it doesn't cost a lot, uh, and it can last a long time, and be formally verified. So yeah, stateless contracts, woo! And uh, yeah, our sparse ENS system should go up in about a week or so, so you can get a demo and you can uh, try it out on on uh, Robson Gorley. Um, and uh, you know, I think that's really uh, to set the bar and, and the reason why we're doing things like Yule Plus and uh, kind of focusing on that stuff. So if you want to use Yule, the Yule Plus, uh, just uh, save, install, Yule P, uh, NPM. Uh, there's, a, there's a Yule Plus plugin, uh, which is awesome, thanks to the uh, D-Type team. And uh, Yule Plus IDE, uh, which will build eventually into a lower level uh, system. GitHub, discussion, et cetera, all the links are there. I can post these slides uh, somewhere. So I went a little over, I went three minutes over, uh, but uh, yeah, that's the presentation. Thank you. No worries, and thank you so much, um, especially for the info on uh, the ENS stuff. You can stop sharing your screen now, if you like. And other than that, um, are there any questions for Nick? either and you can post your slides by the way on our solidity gitter because we're using the gitter chat to um chat during the conference so let's check in this room first any questions for nick on your plus for the newbies here you can use the raise your hand feature to raise your hand so that i can see that you want to say something and let's also look into the Gitter channel. So there was a discussion going on in the Gitter channel about um, basically the problem that like, while Yule Plus is a nice project, I'm a bit worried about promoting developers to write low level code. Some of the Solidity mitigations are going to be missing and people will make mistakes. In my honest opinion, this should come with huge warnings. Like what happens if someone is unlucky and writes two functions that generate the same function ID? With Solidity, he is going to be safe, but with Yule, I suppose there will be no warning. There was already a little discussion on that, but I wanted to give you the chance to also comment. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I think safety is a is a big reason why Solidity needs to exist, uh, and the development safety that comes with having a compiler focused on new developers coming to Ethereum and new developers coming to um, to the ecosystem. And I think that that's critical. But the thing is, as you start to build uh, these more uh, complex builds, and as you start doing uh, you know, development that requires a lot of sensitivity uh, to, to gas and opcodes and you know, exactly what you're doing, yes, it, it takes expert or what we consider to be, I think, expert knowledge to do. Um, there's not a lot of places to go to, and there's not a lot of places to um, find languages that will support you. Um, you know, we had Lisp for a while and things like that, which offered some, you know, language-like options for working with assembly. Uh, but Yule really stationed itself nicely as an intermediate ground. Um, and then Yule Plus is a sort of addition to that that makes it more human to use. So I wouldn't say this is something to be promoted for general developers. I wouldn't say that at all. While we can add a lot of the same safety protections into the Yule Plus compiler, uh, just, just because humans are humans and even I make a ton of mistakes as I'm building, um, 
I think uh, this is more for people who want to go a little deeper. They want to be a little more sensitive. They, they might really have a deeper knowledge of the EVM and they just need something with more precision. Um, but they also don't want to be dealing with the baggage of um, working with just Yule that's more designed to build languages. Uh, uh, at least at least it was intended by default to be that. So I think that's my justification for this and why I think it's important. And as well as Ethereum devs move to more stateless app designs, they will need the sensitivity and the, the precision. And that's where I think Yule Plus will really shine. So we'll, we'll hope to, to get enough safety in there for, for even more general purpose people to to use it uh, or general purpose builds. But right now it is really more specifically for scaling, stateless apps and sort of deeper EVM development. So that's my rant. Um, so I think you're wrong, <laughs> but I also think you're right. Yeah. Okay, we're running a bit over time, but I see that Justin yeah. might want to comment on this again. Okay. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, yeah, like my point is that like you and you plus like this is a great project and uh, when you're going to use it, uh, like you know what you're doing and uh, like from your expectation, like only people with some expertise are going to use it. But uh, my point is that um, you should kind of also when you are promoting and presenting your work on you plus um, had some huge warning uh, just to be sure that like the people that are going to uh, Look at you, and you please must understand that they need like some level of expertise to use this uh, language. Yeah, I, so, like, I, I completely I, agree. <laughs> I, I know that some people are going to, you know, like read your blog post or like read some publication and see, oh, your plus is great. I'm going to reduce like the gas cost and everything, and they might not understand that they need like this level of expertise. So it might be just a um, a notion of having more like running or having more like uh, promoting it with like this huge red flag. You need to know what you're doing when you use place. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think um, I think we can slap massive warnings on everything uh, from a a developer perspective so that they know uh, that that's the case. Yeah, and even even Yule too uh, in many areas says the same thing. So uh, because it's not it really is for more experienced people. I mean, and I wouldn't even, uh, and just to wrap this up, like, you know, when you're starting out even with coding, you you would recommend like a Python, you wouldn't give them a C++ right away and say like, hey, you know, <laughs> this is great. This does like everything you could ever want, use this, you know? Uh, so I, I completely agree, yeah.